So, I realized that last week I said that uh, I would give an explanation as to why sharks have noses. I don't have one. I found many sciencey words that I could not understand and the best description I got was so they can smell things. So I challenge the two of you, if you can find a simple way to explain to me why sharks have noses, please, please, do. Ben, I am really happy that you read Life of Pi, and that is a personal favorite book of mine. I'm really excited to be able to discuss this with you. But before I go any further, I should probably play this. So like I said before, I love this book, and I really like the fact that we get to discuss it right now. Now, I'm a little saddened by the fact that you didn't enjoy the second story where he, uh, he tells about the more real-world, realistic view without the, uh, the fanciful tale. To really get a broader perspective here, we need to take a step back and realize what Martel, the author, was trying to do. He decided to undertake a difficult task. He wants us to believe. Pacine wants us to believe in God just like he does, and he does this through the narrative of these two different stories. The first thing that we really kind of notice about these two stories is that we have absolutely no way of verifying either one. Either one of these stories can be true, either one of these stories can be what actually happened, and it could be that... Uh, he was either in denial and traumatized, so he made up this whole fanciful tale to be able to cope with the trauma of what happened, or it could be that he, um, he just didn't really want to deal with the, uh, the insurance adjusters anymore, and so what he did was tell them a story that they believed just so that they would get out of his hair. Now, either one can be true, and it really could go either way, but the main point is not which story is true. The main point of his telling both of these stories is to see, one, whether you do or do not believe in God, and two, if he can convince you to. The first tale that he tells us is this fanciful tale of him with a tiger and a zebra and a, a hyena and an orangutan all stuck together on this boat and the, uh, the different actions that transpire and then how he has to go through and uh, survive in the company of a, uh, a Bengal tiger in the middle of the ocean. And the second story he tells us is a more realistic view of what possibly could have happened. A story where there's extreme deprivation and trauma and suffering. And it doesn't really matter, again, which story is true. What really matters is which story it is that you want to be true. If it is a story of fanciful belief and amazing feats such as, you know, staying alive with a Bengal tiger in the middle of the ocean, finding this man-eating island, <laughs> then that tells us that you personally are willing to believe in things such as miracles and things that cannot be proven immediately, but you're willing to take things on faith. Therefore, you are more likely and more inclined to believe in God. However, if you choose to believe the second story, you're not willing to take things on faith. So the real question is, which story is it that you believe? One last thing, just in case uh, you want to figure out or learn more about this kind of overall perspective of the book, I'm going to leave a couple links in the description of different articles that you can read that explain this in much more detail. Links below.